just is what it is. So yeah, I'm um, just chilling here. The other stack I think is all on. I can look at my friends list and take a look. Actually, it looks like they're missing one because Tar's only got four. Looks like he's missing Ziggity. So, all these guys are good guys. So that's thanks. Cool. Doesn't make the don't have full teams for the finals. What? No, I mean just Ziggity isn't online yet. Like, he, oh, okay. he's, the, gotcha. he's in a party with four. Um, I th you know, hopefully Ziggity can make it. He was on my friends list a long time, I just didn't play with him very much anymore. So, uh, the great purging happened, as I frequently have to do. <laughs> I mean, I, I, just, I get full up. Like, because I just, friend, you know, if I play somebody a few times, like, usually they either friend me or... You know, if you meet them through Discord, they tend to friend pretty quick. Most people tend to friend pretty quickly. So, other people are pretty stingy about it, but, you know, just two different approaches to it. Uh, yeah, I, I friend people only if they really friend me. But, I mean, my I generally c cut through, like, a couple people every month or so. So. Okay. See, I had to link my Steam to Facebook just to get more spots. Like, it was that tight, like... Easy. Yeah, I mean it's just a lot of people you just don't want to remove. And the other thing is a lot of people have Smurfs, so I mean, you know, ten people took up like forty slots, I think, between all the Smurfs. Um, gotcha. Not, not that I need to have everyone Smurf. It's just if I'm friends with somebody, like it's kind of nice to know if they're on their Smurf, because then you're like, oh, we need a fifth. Like you know, somebody's on their Smurf. Um, yeah. Okay, doesn't, I don't see Ziggity, but I don't know if Ziggity's the one of the regulars. I just know he's played with them in the past. Um, so. Looks like they're all tagged up for the team, so that's cool. Oh, I've got my energy drink, as promised, because I stayed up way too late last night playing Dota, because I'm not going to get to play any today, basically. So. <laughs> well, plus, I had two very frustrating games that we uh, did not go that great, so. I would like to blame Herpes for one of those. He was my uh, blame target that game. He was Sand King, so he was the only initiation we had. So, like, it literally was entirely on him to start the fights well. Thus, it's all his fault. <laughs> or, you know, the fact that we didn't pick or pick up any other initiation items. You know, one of the two. And then the other game, we had a guy play support Venno. Um, as a five, he said he'd play it. And then he literally didn't buy any support items till he had it at Yule's up. And he bought a Yules on a 5 Venno, so it did not go well. The funny yeah. thing was, is he tried to Yules Gale people, and he'd miss. Because he'd assume they'd stay perfectly still, and then, like, not account for the travel time of Gale, and he would miss them. I'm like, Oof. come on, man. You just gotta, like, you gotta just, like, shoot through them a little bit, and even if they move, like, perpendicular, you still get them. Like, you just gotta get close and shoot through them then. Like, but you don't even need Yules to set up Gale. Gale's not that hard to hit unless you're, like, truly far away. Like, just get a blink or a force and you're, you're gonna hit it, so. Anyway, I had to play Venno the next game to show him how it's done. It was as a carry of Venno, but, like, still, like, don't get Yules on Venno. Oh, by the way, um, if we ever want to use... ZPS, um, I'd like to in the future, like we were talking about okay. the other day, but I just, uh, we didn't have it set up and I want to, like, set that up sometime. Obviously not tonight. It's just I keep saying that, like, not tonight. <laughs> and I never forget, yeah, yeah, yeah. never remember to do it. Yeah, it never gets done. Hey, Digi, hey, SA. Um, thanks for the host.ptv. Uh, thanks to the host, SA. So this could be fun. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. No, we can. He can give me the stream key. It actually doesn't take that long. Like we could do it in between breaks, games. Just mute everything. Like you could send me the info. Um, okay. And then I'll just have it for next time. And once I have it, it's you just save it as a, a setting. It's it's actually pretty simple. Uh, but 
looks like we're just waiting for bathroom breaks. I'm gonna leave the webcam on until we're actually into the draft so you can look at me with my glasses and my stubble and my slightly puffy face right now because I gained some weight on vacation, I'm still working on it. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. that's what well, vacations are for, man. They are. They are. But it's hard. I like to run outside. That's my form of exercise. I, like, I really like to run outside in the hills of my neighborhood. But it is actually 100 degrees out at all times. So I basically have like a half hour window to go run. And if I like play Dota or do anything else, like it's kind of usually it messes up that window. Because like you just don't have that long of time for where the temperature is actually conducive to not dying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exaggerating, of course. Like, there's r actual people who are hardcore runners who do it all the time, but you know, you have to like drink like a gallon of water. I'm not even joking to not like risk, you know, heat issue. And you like running on hills? That's my least favorite. It's like... Uh, so like these aren't like the worst hills. It's like my neighborhood just has like rolling hills, so it's actually kind of nice because it makes the run not boring. Uh, mm, that's true. That's true. And not only that, like because like. It winds along like a ravine sort of thing, so my route can actually take me through... I can take it pretty flat if I want, just a slight incline down one way and then up the other. Like, not nothing severe, like... Uh, you couldn't even sled down it, basically. But yeah. if I want to, I can go, like, sprint up a hill or sprint down a hill. You know, you can do some stuff like there. Uh, hey, Jordan Hansen's here. Um, Proud's here. <laughs> You yeah. said that in a different voice. <laughs> no, I was trying to figure out if it was. It says Proudasil. I'm not like I'm like I'm assuming that's proud. I don't know if that is though. Like I don't know what the <laughs> name is. I just saw it's proud first, and then I saw like there's like a epithet to it, and then I'm like, is that actually proud, or is that just somebody like clowning to be proud? It could be either, you know. It's true. It's true. I think Proudasil is actually him though. Yeah, not, I, I'm not 100 percent sure. But, I'm pretty yeah, it's... sure it's him, but they're they're very excited that we are talking about my pubs because like we're just waiting to go. But it looks like the Dire Straits is taking second side. Lemon Snow Cones is selected uh, Radiant, um, and Dire Straits had priority there, so they valued second pick. So they got a second pick draft potentially coming up. And uh, I'm just looking for Radiant. So hopefully we're gonna get going here, and then we can actually talk about Dota. And I can turn off the cam and we can go. But yeah, we got Peyton Zag here. So we got we got 15 viewers. We got a lot of viewers now. This is pretty cool. Um, I'm glad I have energy drinks because otherwise I might just actually fall asleep. <laughs> you kid, yep. I've I've definitely almost fallen asleep, and then like a ravage happened, and it kind of gave me a little energy. Like, but man, sometimes you know you're casting and. Uh, you just you just kind of lose focus. You zone out. I mean, it happens in Dota games too. Like you just zone out and stop looking at the map, and you just like click the creep, click the creep, um, or you know whatever you're doing. But focusing on like you just stare, waiting for their carry to come, and then you don't notice like the fight happening at your other tower. But, yep. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the webcam now so we can focus on the draft. And here we go. Um, as you could probably guess from my meandering rambling, I'm Fafnir. This is Flub Dota, who's gonna be my co-caster with. And this is the best of five of 82L Season 16 Under 3K Champions chip round. So this is going to be a long one, um, at least three games. And uh, I know both these teams, and I think they're pretty evenly matched, though I'm not certain of that. Oh, God. I got disconnected. What? Two. Maybe the lobby just dropped. Yep. I don't know what happened, but apparently it's Vision's fault, so, um, that is, I guess he didn't load into the lobby, um, the good news is the lobby didn't, like, cr the lobby didn't crash, so we don't have to reset anything, the bad news is, is that we are not starting the dang game, so I'm gonna turn the webpack gun on, uh, I'll give Tar the... Um, so hopefully we don't have any more computer issues. But yeah, how have things been going with you, Flub? Uh, how was your day today? Because I don't know what pretty good, to talk man. about. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's been pretty good. Uh, it's, I'm still working on my climb on solo, so I 
been trying to get that up, and I actually got it up to like, I think it was one, well, 5,144, and it's been going down a little bit over the past couple of days. I was trying to get a little bit more done, but uh, just hang, hung out with some buddies like uh, Top Gun and SA and stuff like that. We played some Dota, so it's always good when you get a chance to hang out with buddies. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I just had a normal day at work. I've been mostly playing with my car, um, then messing with settings with that, and yeah, uh, not a whole lot else. You know, my wife, we got a soda stream, so setting that up, she's showed me how to use that so I can make her a thing of water if she needs me to do that in the morning or something to get her going, because uh, she got dehydrated, but she hates drinking um, like just regular plain water, but she'll drink sparkling water even without flavoring. Um, then, uh, so we got that, so we didn't have to, like, buy Gatorade for her, or the, you know, the bottled sparkling water, it's like a dollar, like, it's like a quarter a bottle, a liter, if you buy it, just the soda stream thing, and you can just do it at home, it's like a dollar at the grocery store, and that's if it's a decent sale on the ones she usually liked, so, adds up pretty quick if she's gonna take one or two to work every day, um, makes sense, let's see, yeah, they can be think. taxing, yeah, I'm trying to think, uh, what else is going on? Not a whole lot. There's a bachelor party on uh, Saturday. That'll be fun. Nice, nice. Some bars, walk around. That's kind of it going on with me. The main thing I want is Vision to get uh, get online, get this game going. Stop having potato computer? I agree. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I am very hyped to do this cast. I Best of five, you kind of have to get a little bit hyped for, especially for finals, so... I'm glad that we're doing this. This is going to be a lot of fun, and I hope I hope that they have a good back and forth, like you say they do. I actually don't know anyone on Lemon Snow, but obviously I know the Dire Straits. I've casted many of their games, and I know a few of them, so should be good. Should be good. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting. The main thing is, is I'll say, is that the Lemon Snow cones um, Tar play, doesn't play a ton of ranked. So I don't know if how much he's gotten better. Like he was like right around a three K player um, when I last couple couple times I played with him. And that's where he was, and I remember him being pretty good. Um, I don't think I'd climb solo like this was a long time ago. Uh, so he was around the same MR as me because I was around three point three or three point four at the time. But like he was good, uh, and he but he, like because he doesn't play a ton of ranked, I don't know if he's gotten better or not. Like because it's you know you never know. Like just I look. Through, click through public profiles, see, oh, you know, who's the best player? Um, he's playing mid for them now, and he just crushed the last few games. To be fair, though, he, he did have the Shadowfiend Clockwork thing, and, you know, if you get nine damage, you can just destroy people, um, or whatever. You're getting, like, nine souls, uh, or however many you get, depending on your coordination to get that, but it's really easy to steamroll that, because... I honestly, I've, I've watched it happen a couple times in, in Pub Dota, and people like don't respect it. They're like, "Oh, I'll go trade with the Shadow Fiend." They don't like even realize he had the Clockwork. And I watched those games, and just what happened is he just punched the crap out of a Viper, because the Viper thought, "Oh, I'll just take on the Shadow Fiend, who had 18 more damage than he expected." And uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it does not work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it got got way worse um, for the yeah. Viper from there. Um, next game was a little more contested, but. Uh, um, you know, it's good games. So, I mean, while Dire Straits, I mean, we saw them. They tried to throw that game one of their last best of three as hard as they possibly could. <laughs> Fortunately, the other team threw it more. I don't even know if they threw it more. It's just that they had a better rapier carrier, and when they traded rapiers, like Weaver, Medusa having the rapier for a little while is better than the Spectre. <laughs> and thus they... Well, actually, no, that's not fair. They'd taken more buildings when the whole throw started. So yeah. that's probably what, in the end, made it. That meant they got Megas when the craziness happened, and Megas meant that they were just always in a better position to win, truthfully. Um, it's true. Yeah. They also, well, credit to both teams in that series, too. Like they oh, yeah. Had, the like, games are all super close. All of them. Yeah. And they were well played. Like there was some really good plays that were be that were being made, definitely within those games too. It's, even in the first game, uh, even though it had some throwy moments, like those are the, the the times obviously when you get upset about stuff. But they were they were they were still well played. Oh, here's the thing. Like when I say throwy moments, I mean um, 
they made really bad late game decisions, but you'll see pro teams make really bad late game decisions. And honestly, amateur teams, you don't have the same level of practice in late game scenarios because you just don't play as much Dota, especially as a best of five. So that's when that's why throws happen so much. Um, sure, that's a good point. I, I think in, the, in these sort of amateur playoffs, because you just get into these late game scenarios where every decision is so important. Like not having a TP or getting your TP canceled can just be game losing. Um, sure. So. Well, we're into the draft. Vision loaded in, so good for him. He apparently upgraded his computer in the last five minutes. And we can talk about this, and I can pop off my webcam, and we can just look at the beautiful heroes like Slardar and Ricky. Who are actually, oh, they're all ugly heroes, never mind. But <laughs> that's the best of five. Yeah. This is game one. Uh, dire Straits selected second pick. Lemon Stones uh, picked uh, Radiant. And we have a Slardar and Slark band out. Along with uh, Ricky Axe. Honestly, some really interesting bands coming out here, Faf. I don't know if there's a really strong player on Dire Straits of Slaughter or Slark. I haven't really seen them pick up Slaughter or Slark as much in the games I've casted with them. So it's interesting that they're banning out him as a hero. Maybe they just fear the hero in general. Uh, there's a lot of counters to the hero right now, though, so I'm not 100% sure why they're banning that out. Uh, there could be also... they they just don't like the rotation of like a certain hero they need to have like a silencer pickup or and silencer is actually pretty decent versus them it's kind of a back and forth so it could be a certain hero that slark that slark just kind of eats alive that they don't want to deal with uh on the other hand they also have dire straits banning out the axe and the ricky and i've seen dire straits ban out axe a few times now so i think they just respect that hero and maybe Ricky is probably you. You play with the lemons. Do they or do they play a really nice Ricky? Um, I actually play with the Dire Straits guys. I haven't played with lemons uh, very much. Oh, okay. Um, they. Uh, I know one of their players likes to play Ricky. Um, I can't remember who. And I no 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 that's not even him. Okay, never mind. Um, no, I don't think they play much Ricky. I know Axe is one of their offlaner's heroes that he'll go to. He likes Axe, he likes Legion, he likes Sand King. These are the sort of heroes he likes, too. So, um, I'm not sure about Lemon Snow Cones. Maybe it's the other way around. But, um, you know, the Slark thing, they picked up Lion. Well, Lion is pretty good on that Slark. He is squishy. I just wonder if they got stomped. They just don't want to carry who can just, like, 1v5 them in the late game. You know, um, in Dire Straits, maybe they want to have something greedy with the jungler, and that could be, like, if that's a 4 Sand King, like, if they just, if they're planning to play super greedy with the Invoker pick, they just get rid of the Ricky and get rid of the Axe, because Axe is really good at punishing greedy lineups, I find, because he, he takes advantage of the space he gives him to get his blink, and then once he has his blink, he just runs at them and just kills them over and over again. Um, Axe is one of those, Axe and Legion I actually really like picking against greedy lineups, if you see it, because they take, they use that space and they bring tempo after they, the first ten minutes. Um, kind of like a jungle Venno can do the same thing. But you, you just said it, the silencer, so... Uh, you think that's a core silencer? I do, I do. And that's actually the reason why I think that they banned out the Slark, is that if you time it correctly, you can kind of get the silent. You can kind of go on silencer, and it kind of becomes a panic m mode bu button, whereas it, on a support, it's like, okay, he's jumping on me, I can wait till the very last second, silence... I'm going to die, but it's not as big a deal. And when he's a core, he's dying, dying, dying. And like, as the first pop comes on him, he thinks that they're all going to converge on him. So he has to hit his ultimate. And if he hits his ultimate, then Slurk has the urge to be able to get everything off still and still live. So it could have been that. Uh, I think it's interesting, though. They, they're going for a certain style here, for sure. They're wanting to get the silencer, make sure that, that he exists, and then take away all the good possible here is to stop him they're going for anti-mage obviously he's a very strong able to take away all of his mana do a lot of damage potential there and he, I, he it's kind of a double-edged sword though because you can have good rotations with a core silencer and have two stunning supports so it's interesting that they're going to ban out these heroes that can that silencer can do well versus silencer well, doesn't necessarily lose in those lineups I think he is weak against them, and that they're both they both go first item Manta, and while they both are vulnerable to his glaives and the right clicks that come out from that, they they both can get jump on him. 
um, pretty easily. Uh, I don't really like playing a core silencer against either of those heroes because I feel like I'm on a clock. I feel like you have to get stuff done before Manta's done. And then, it's not even Manta, it's more like the second item. Because once you have Manta plus one item, then it gets rough for the silencer. That's when he needs a BKB or a Ghost Scepter, depending on which hero you're versus. And then it's then you have to play very aggressive or defensive. Like, there's no... You, you can't go cautiously. But CM is the pickup with the Sand King uh, Invoker. Both love CM Aura. And they pick up the Shadow Shaman. So that is a core silencer. And it looks like they are going to play that sort of tempo game because... Uh, Shadow Shaman, uh, he's a greedy support, but once he hits 6, you just start pushing with him. And Silencer's pretty good at that, because if Shadow Shaman's allowed to play down his wards, you can't really fight into those wards, and they don't have a hero, like, Invoker's not really great at hitting the wards um, himself, and, you know, they, they can just rely on the global silence to counter-initiate if they engage upon them, they're fighting under wards, and you can just win the fight from there. Also, I mean, they have... But like you said, Invoker's not great, and Sand King is just not the hero. He doesn't get the explosion off of them. They're immune to that magic damage. That's all what he's about. You don't want melees to go up against that. Plus, Crystal Maiden, it's Legion nice to have Commander. a lot of stuns versus her, so it's a very good pickup there for, for them. Answering with a Legion Commander, though, is very strong. Uh, she's a tanky hero that can kind of withstand the silence, and if you can, maybe you can BKB it off and then heal up an Invoker, so he doesn't have to go BKB quite so early, and kind of have two people that are able to fight in the in the main stage of of combat versus a silencer, and that's kind of the yeah. best way to break yeah. him up is the free the two most important people in a draft while his ultimate's going because if he's not if he doesn't have the whole team silenced out, then it's not a successful ultimate. Yeah, and and none of that it's they'd already picked their two supports they don't have well the Sand King could have been the offlane, but. Um... They clearly decided wanted to run it as a support, I think, and that meant they needed a save support. If you don't have a save support versus a silencer, lion, shadow shaman, he, once they have blinks, you're just gonna lose a hero at the start of every fight, in most circumstances. Um, so, you know, this is I, I like the clinks pick though. It, it really commits hard into the the pushing strat, and not only that, he's a hero that doesn't. Um, it's hard for Legion to bully a Clinks as long as he gets a little bit of help and gets that XP advantage. If he gets a level or two on her, um, he can be, you know, he can they can just chain pull and he can just deal with her. Uh, and not only that, he can actually shove her out of lane with his Searing Arrows. And he just, again, commits to the push very hard. Invoker's kind of weak against Clinks until... Uh, until he gets his Ags up, and then Clinks is really weak until he gets his BKB up. But they should probably arrive at around the same time. You know, Deso, BKB, Ags, Midas, that sort of timing. So, I'm really curious to what carry I, I, would be I, good for limit, for Dire Straits now. What do you think they should ban out? Um, For Dire Straits, they need... They need someone that isn't quite as dependent on on using their spells, obviously, at this point. It's the best way to stop Silencer. I'm thinking Troll is maybe the best pick for them. It really helps Legion Commander get dual damage uh, from across the map. Phantom Assassin. That's not bad to ban out a... Uh, if I'm a Medusa, especially if they're going really links. greedy. But yeah, offlane clinks is going to be a little hard to deal with, and Legion Commander doesn't really mind Phantom Assassin. Yeah, you can spam, but she can spam just as much. So yeah, and she builds blade mail. Like you just can't. Like once she hits her timings, you're you should be getting your blade mail. So duels will, well, you know, she's not going to kill you in a duel before you kill her. Uh, right. Also, with the evasion. I was going to say that Clinks is actually really, like, to kind of go on top of what you were saying, Clinks is great for the harassment tool, but it's also great to have someone to stop the invoker. They need, like, some type of rotation uh, out from their from their safe lane, I thought, to really pressure the invoker, because invokers are just going super greedy lately. And it's almost, like, more greedy than an AM when you pick up an invoker at this point. And whenever I see that, I want to get these ganking heroes and one of the ganking heroes i feel like should be a core and silencer can gank he's like part of the equation with his global silence but he doesn't offer the damage that a clinks does with the gank so i really liked it now picking up that phantom assassin seems like a miscommunication within the draft uh 
it's it's a lot of really easily blow up heroes. All of them are very weak to a lot of magic, and the only way they're stopping that is silencer. So yeah, it's taking a page from MDL. Um, yeah, if if you know, this is a greedy pick, but if Chaos Knight gets two items and some levels, him and Invoker will just destroy, run through this game. It's true. It's true, and they don't have a lot to break up his illusions right now. So there's they have they do have Lion, and he has the availability to both Mana Drain and X. So there is that problem. I don't necessarily think that it's a perfect pick because of that. But if Legion Commander can jump in and if they if Dire Straits can jump in beforehand and get the Legion Commander ult on the Silencer or the Lion, I think it's going to cause a really big problem for Lemon Snow Cones in this draft. Yeah. And I'm going to have to give the, the advantage to Dire Straits just because of that combination. Yeah, I... In the end, it's it's just they have an offlane hero. Like I, this, clink should not be getting much of anything against the CK plus the support lane. Um, they have the CM aura, so CK is going to be able to spam reality rift, spam his stun as a way to harass clinks out. Um, if they run dual lanes, um, I think their dual lanes are relatively weaker. The, the main thing that needs to happen is uh, I don't know. Like I don't know how what would be a good way to run this. Like. Are they gonna put the PA mid? Like Silencer does okay against Invoker, like he's a good mid laner, but PA is more of a shut you down the shut down an invoker in lane. Uh Silencer it's a little trickier, I find. Could do that, but you're sacrificing a lot across the map. Yeah, you could do some type of aggro tri lane. It wouldn't be as effective though. They still have a decent aggro tri lane versus you. Yeah. The I just think it's dual lanes, man. Right. Dual, dual lanes would he be even worse? That'd just be more more food to the flame. Yeah, it's like strikes he, a little too slow. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. yeah I, really, I mean, I really I, think they're but, running dual lanes. Like, just look at how they're moving. Uh, they've got the wards split up. Uh, this this looks like a dual lanes to me. Uh, I don't know if dual lanes is necessarily worse, be, mostly because of the CM. I think it gets bad once if they as long as they don't get kills killed before CM hits level 2 and can come help, or if CM, if they get caught out here. Uh, I like that they got a ward up in, in, uh, before the CK got in range to see this. Um, that's really important. If you're going to run dual lanes like this, you have to have vision, because you have two heroes with no HP. Shadow Shaman and Clinks are both squishy little boys. Clinks especially so. Holy crap. He only has 500 uh, HP. I forgot how squishy he is. Real, real quick, Vision did smoke out there and he did place down a ward in front of the view of Car. silencer silencer actually broke his smoke and he still placed down the ward so i'm a little interested on why he was thinking that he just wanted to guarantee that the, the ward was placed but i, I um, think it's it, okay that's just a simple hey the pros do it i'm gonna smoke we're gonna run out there and place the ward because i'm gonna get the ward down not thinking why why they do it and what the smoke really does for you, aka it lets you not place that ward under vision. You break it, you just back off. So look, yeah. Lion's gonna instantly deward it. He actually burns a tango on it. Um, honestly, in those situations, what I ask my supports to do is give me the sentry. I'll just use it once I need a tango. I get rid of it, and then you just get double tango. Uh, the block is superior for a dire wolf. That's a pretty big deal um, for an invoker level one, especially. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, they're running these dual lanes, and they've got a sentry down here. Did they get a second D ward? Nope, they didn't. And this is going to be first blood here on this Clinks. Oh no, they didn't bring Vish. Oh, they do have a sentry, but is it going to be enough? No, nope. it is not. They got him pretty low. They 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 had him in the the range of the sentry for a long time. Yeah. Vision just got a, a stunned out there for a little bit, so it wasn't the combination. It really wasn't. Oh, they did there. get the D ward. Wow. Okay. So they just predict. They just took a guess where the ward was going to be, and they got it. Uh, Sklinks is going to have to burn off his salve, and yeah, already a pretty ugly start for um, the Clinks already losing that much HP and that much regen. And they did successfully get off at least a partial pull, so they're going to have a slight XP advantage. Meanwhile, bot lane, uh, looks like Lion did execute, but it was just a single pull. So, you know, you're going to lose some XP, but not the most, especially in the small camp. 
Honestly, if you're looking at the lane though, if they would have, they should have gotten the kill at level one. The tri lane versus dual lane, like the shadow shaman is getting a lot of pressure out at this point. Morgan Freeman actually might go down if he goes returns on him. Nope, they didn't want to want to want to risk it. Uh, they're gonna actually go for the sand king. Ooh, he got hex level one. Ooh, he's 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 been. Yeah. He's been using it to a good effect, though, man. He has the range, at least, on it. And, honestly, they should have just jumped him immediately with Shadow, yeah. on, on Shadow Shaman. Well, they still have the damage. Because, um, yeah, I guess Hex is because Shadow Shaman provides the damage. Now their kill potential's gone up a lot. Shadow Shaman's level 2, and they have the level 2 in Clink, so he's got Searing Arrows. But they got the Shadow Shaman out. Oh, it looks like Herp's going down against the... Uh, the Lion top. PA, but top, the Shadow Shaman's gonna go down, and the Klinks is also in trouble. He does, is gonna be able to kill the CM, and then just skeleton walk away. But meanwhile, down bot, we, well, that whole engagement went on, we missed. Herpes actually going down to the PA Lion combo. I don't think there's any way he should have died to that. He must have gotten really aggressive with trading, because um, this, this lane doesn't have much damage right now at all, so no reason He's... the Legion should die. Yeah, he. I think what's what, what's going on in Legion. Well, they're they're pressuring top right now. Vision's getting oh. low, pretty low at this point. They he's just not respecting what the Shadow Shaman's da right click damage can do at this point. And really, that's that's the what I was going to be talking about in this draft. Oh, is that they go on two separate they... targets though. Oh, but they have the vision on the Clinks. Snapped is going to go down there. And this Shadow Shaman also should be dead. The creeps are kind of blocking him off. The two supports are both chasing him. If he has a TP, he could get he's out. He's got 35 seconds on it. Oh he's, no, he's, he's gone. dead. Yeah. The, the, he's gonna make it last. Get the value clarity cancel. Oh, he canceled yep. the clarity. That's the best. Okay. You did something. Economic damage, I guess. Now Clinks is uh, optimistically skeleton walking up to the top room. He's not. It's already gone. Um, in the mid lane, which has been not nearly as exciting as these dual lanes where kills are happening. Oh, down bot. Yeah, look, the PA is getting pressured quite a bit. Uh, where does the lion end up going? Okay, looks like lion went top, so the PA made the call to just be left solo. But this legion's a level up and is almost going to... Oh, he's going for it. One more right click. He's got the move speed advantage right now and no boots. Oh, but the move speed wears out. Does he have enough mana? No, he doesn't. PA has Honestly. boots. He's gonna... Ooh. Oh, the sun strike! Oh! Nice Fantastic play. Fantastic play by, by the, the, the lane right there. That's one of the things that a lot of people don't realize, is that if you chase someone down like that, they're like, okay, well, we're making him waste time. This is great. And then with an invoker on the field, you, you just tell them, just chase them. It'll tell it'll tell me exactly where they're going because it, they are afraid that you'll hit them once, and gets sets up an easy kill, gets the experience. Yep, just a great play. Okay, um, this looks like snapped. Uh, needs to restart. So, state of the game is it's four to two, but overall um, the silencers winning mid um, by a solid margin, but nothing nothing that you'd. Uh, be upset about though direwolf has got an invis rune and vision looks like they're trying to set up to kill the silencer i don't know if they're gonna be able to pull it off though not he, Actually, if he gets out I of position that... yeah if he if he gets he needs to go off his high ground i think but if he does he could die yeah he does have last word arcane curse combination so they know that that he has a lot of harassment potential whenever he goes on top of him but if they play it just right he can set up a cold snap gets get a stun out once before he uh, gets out last word and then all he needs to do is hit with the sun strike when, with his right clicks because the silence actually won't tick for a few seconds and then he can actually physically cast his spell he won't have any right clicks coming out from glaives uh, so there's there's that, and he's probably noticed that he's not last hitting at all with Glaive. So we, I would assume that the Invoker knows that he, he doesn't have it up. And Vision, if he decides to move in, he still has level 2 Burrow Strike. It's actually quite a big boost com compared to his level 1 on distance. And they, if they do it just right, they should be able to, because Silencer doesn't have boots yet. And he's only 295 movement speed, and Sand King has 340 right now on his boots of speed. So 
quite a bit of movement speed on top of him. They should be able to play around that. And I don't think it's going to happen though. He's got his boots on the courier. He's just going to last hit these these four creeps under tower. And then by the time he's done last hitting them, I think his boots will be there. And he should be fine, unless for some reason, like I said, he decides to get aggressive. But, like, you can't even, because Direwolf's invis, you can't even bait him. Like, normally you could just bait him by, like, just take a bad trade and let Silencer think, oh, I can just trade with him great now, and then Sankin gets him. But we'll see how they play it. Um, but overall, the situation top, Clanks only has four last hits. Herps has the assist and the, four, and the uh, nine last hits. He's getting his poor man shield and his boots um, soonish. And PA, on the other hand, has got some decent last hits in the one kill. But overall, is looking pretty sad. And has queued up a Battle Fury. Ooh. Wanting some sort of tool to deal with the CK, I guess. But man, if you're going a greedy lineup and a Battle Fury, it feels way too much. Yeah, and honestly, like Legion has less, less items down here at this point. But she has the right items queued up. She has a wand available to her. She's getting the... Uh, she's actually bought out the poor man's shield. So she's going to be pretty hard to gank at this point. Have a lot of potential. A lot of focus on her down at bottom. Which makes the top lane that much harder with it versus that tri lane. Because, like you said, the Clinks isn't getting anything. And he's not going to get anything at this point if they keep, keep, keep their lane strong. Uh, with with Legion Commander not only having the wand and the, the availability of the poor man's shield keeping him alive, you also have the arcane aura, so you can spam a lot more than the yeah Legion with the, can. with the CM. You just win the harass war. Dagger eventually is a better harass tool, but not not until you have a blightstone and not until you have some not until you have your ult. Um, but the Q she's not even going for for either one. I know. Like, she's not going for the Blight, or she's not going for... for if phase. she went for phase. phase, it would work out just yep. just okay. Well, Direwolf chooses to reveal himself mid. Looks like Vision is calling it off. Yeah. I think they decided that up top there's more likely to get a kill, and I think that's the right call. Because um, Silencer wasn't moving off his spot. Goes and checks for the rune. Um, yeah, so see what CK is doing. Looks like he's going for a fairly standard build of just getting some stats up early and then probably an armlet. Maybe a Midas after the wand treads. Oh, looks like Shadow Shaman's already used his disabled. Should, oh, get stunned out and just blown up. A nice job by Voiceless Fade. He just walks up, baits the uh, Shadow Shaman to use his disables there. And then once that happens, they just move in with the Sand King. The downside of this is that Snap is going to be able to get some last hits under tower safely, but you know, you'll always take the kill for that. Oh, and CM gets picked up. What? The CM just like tanked a lot of the creeps there trying oh, to pull man. it, and then died. she yeah. almost got away, but a last hit from the big. Yep. <laughs> he lost. Not much it, else so. you can say. Uh, we are past the days of the suicide meta. Thank goodness. <laughs> um, but from there. Yeah, I agree, Tricky. They should have started earlier. Uh, I know the Dire Straits was asking to, but I don't know if they were able to um, on the uh, Lemon Snow Cone side. Yeah, people got jobs. Uh, so Dire Wolf is still just farming away, working towards his Midas. Not going to be great timing, but he's caught up to the Silencer and last hits, and anytime your Invoker's trading even mid, you're happy. Because um, he's pretty much the greediest mid in the world. Yes. And the, the thing is, though, at this point, they, they are working out really well, and it's it's all due to this duo lane top. The idea of having a Shadow Shaman up here creates a lot of problem. Oh, Morgan just... Freeform is super dead. Yeah, goes, it's not in, a... goes in for a D ward and does does get it, but pays for it with his life. It's, it's not about the D warding out this lane. It's just if you guys, if they would just see the Shadow Shaman, you just jump him every single moment you possibly can. You just farm off of that hero because he has no escape no way to do anything and clinks at these early levels yeah he does some damage but nothing compared to like the, the amount of stun damage that you can just do to blow up a sh squishy little shadow oh, shaman mid. Uh, vision kind of ran in a circle after our uh, friendly neighborhood silencer Ooh, bottom but he, oh bottom oh they're going on the is there a stun up he's got the stun 
Nope, but with Ooh. the stick and the poor man, easily gets away. And there he has the shrine up. He's just gonna shrine up and be just fine. But yeah, I think the people will really focus on sentries. You don't actually need a sentry. It's not like the clinks is gonna surprise the CK and burst him down. If he does, that means the CK was playing way too close. The issue is um, if the CK, you know, if Shadow Shaman comes up on you, so just have dust to run the run the clinks down if you want to kill him, and then just have vision and you know be ready. Uh, meanwhile, down at the bottom though, uh, Legion's just diving the tower, has duel up. Oh, and here comes the duel. I don't know if the damage... Oh, there's the Sunstrike. Oh, I thought that Sunstrike was going to miss. And now Lion's going to get run down. He has boots, but I think they're going to have another Frostbite. Yep, there's the other Frostbite and a double kill. Meanwhile, up top, it looks like while this was all happening, uh, the CK just blows up the uh, sh uh, Shadow Shaman. Once again, he's got plenty of levels on him. It's it's a lot of explosive damage versus such a weak, weak support. I, I thought it was fine in a tri lane type situation push out a legion commander with that great harass potential but they're just not really playing the hero to its great value and putting it in a in a versus a tri lane is just not what he does the best though they might get something here faf nope. no i mean he's just too tanky he's uh ck with treads just he's got all the strength in the world um, oh he's got a full one too so not going for like a greedy Midas build against the sturdy contesting, just get your stats up, be able to play. Um, Silencers just farming away. I'm not sure what the plan is. They're going these sort of greedy heroes and greedy builds, and they're playing into the late game of the CK Invoker. They don't have a ready way to deal with. I mean, but they're fine against Invoker. Um, PA. Yeah, they're going to get another kill top. Yep. And Shadow Shaman just can't be in this lane anymore. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's not what the hero is supposed to do. The hero is supposed to guarantee you either farm or, like, as a mid position, just guarantee you towers. Or just you, be you yeah, or something. just or just be greedy. Like, if he was down bot and they left this PA kind of alone, let the Legion trade effectively, and just he chain pulled and got levels. Because if he was able to get a quick six, relatively quick six, then you just start getting objectives off him. It's a greedy support, but instead they just have a line. You know, they have these underleveled supports or relatively low supports that don't change the game. And the silencer hasn't done anything yet. Just kind of playing his lane, which is fine. But you know, his global's He's... up now. They need to do something with this. Also, oh, down bottom, they oh, get the duel yeah. off, and he wins. Yeah. Even uh, with the but... missed sunstrike. Well, that's the thing, is that PA only has a point in Blur, has no stat items, and, you know, every time he gets counterattacked, it's so much damage. So, uh, this Legion's gonna be a big problem. Already has uh, phase boots, can start working on his blink. Farm isn't great on her, but has the levels, which is the biggest thing. Especially when you have Sunstrike to help guarantee dual wins that you can just run down. It's true. Once once the Radiant gets a few, few levels here, honestly, I'm... I think one of the bigger problems is that Silencer has gone this whole harass build. He hasn't really been able to outlast hit the <clears throat> the Invoker at this point. Um, and Invoker doesn't care if you harass him. As you can see, he has quite a few points in the boss. It's alright if I get harassed out just a little bit, because I'm just going to regen up and take the creep wave here eventually. So, um, Yeah, I think this build's fine if you... Um... If you go fight with it now. Like, you got your global, you got your max nukes. His spells are really good for just fights. Like, his max level Q is a big, is a relatively powerful slow. Does a lot of damage if you get it on every one of the team fight starts. And then his E is a very powerful, just direct nuke. That gives vision as well. Um, sure. Yeah, the silencer is just kind of... Oh, top again. Lion's TPing up here. Oh, they have the Legion. They're going for this kill. They should be able to get it once this... Oh, there's the Sunstrike. Oh, it misses, but... Reality Earth comes out. Herpes has a press the attack soon, but he just wants to duel him. Oh, he runs in. He gets fogged, though. He gets hexed up. But there's no mana for his second spell. And the press the attack comes out. Another kill happens. They get the duel onto Clinks. They stun out. Clinks dies in the duel. The Silencer's walked over. Does get two int from the one kill that they got return on the CM. But he doesn't have the mana to really do much else. Just trying to punish Void. They might be able to get vision here. Yeah, Shadow Shaman's gonna catch him. The nuke's out. He should be able to grab him. And this is gonna be another two in for the silencer. Meanwhile, it looks like CK has popped his ult just to push the tower. 
But with no support, they can easily just get rid of these, yeah. Illusions aren't that tanky yet, and just gonna be kind of a wasted ult for him, but... The What's real star the... of the show was the Invoker, though, who has his Midas now, and he's just able to farm. Yeah, I was about to ask you, what's the what's the better trade-off? 10 damage or 4 intelligence? Uh, since it's a core silencer, 4 intelligence is better overall. But the real problem was that the Invoker was farming the whole time. So it's not just a 10 damage trade. It's 10 damage, plus the Invoker got to pressure mid-tower. He almost took it, if you look. Its HP is very low. And Silencer's been protect had before then had protected it pretty well. And he did all that damage with just Alacrity and uh, one wave or maybe two waves while that was going on. So, not great trades, and I'll take you, if you look at the XP graph, they're down about 2,000 XP and 2,000 gold, and that XP is so killer right now, they still don't have Shadow Shaman wards, and Clink's just at level 6. And it looks like he might be going down here, CM ult comes out, nice cancel on there, but the Sunstrike comes out, the Sunstrike actually misses, and they do get the Clink's out of there. Wow, I thought he was dead for sure. Yeah, he lived life on the very edge there. That was either impressive uh, th or... This is the... Yeah, I mean, they just... The line came in and got a good stun, and then he du juked the sun strike. Um, that's actually, though, like, Clink's just ulted. He actually doesn't even have to go entirely home because he had his ult off cooldown. He just gets back up to half HP. No problem. Now, I meanwhile, I thought, though, this PA is being stalked by a Legion and the uh, Sand King. I don't think he saw it coming... Nope, doesn't look like he has a ward, so... But he's playing super cautious, so I think he knows what's up. He's still going for this Brown Boots Battle Fury build. So this is a pretty bad... Uh, PA can't really do anything. Oh, but Silencer walks in randomly and finds them. Oh, I guess they did have this ward here, so... They saw it the whole way. I missed that. I was looking at the minimap, not the actual screen. I missed that ward there, so... They did give Shadow Shaman mid to get his 6, which he did. He denied out the tower, so... That's good. I mean... Him getting his six is kind of their way back into the game. They've got to get some value out of these wards. Meanwhile, Clink's getting gone on again. Sun strike out, frostbite, and another kill. And this invoker is just going to get out of control here. They've got so much sun strike set up. He's already two k gold away from his ags. He's level twelve, and he's oh, wow. just going to be able to AFK farm. He just dropped his uh, his ult on Shadow Shaman on a pulled stack. Wait, what? Okay. Up top, he just it wasn't and then he even, blocked wasn't even, it. Yeah, but it wasn't even a freaking it like wasn't even double stack or anything. Yeah. What? Wow. What? Uh, okay. I've never seen that play. That's an interesting play. Um, it does block the camp, so he did guarantee that out for them. Well, the, he put a sentry down to bottom. really block it. Yeah. Uh, looks like they got a kill on Herps. Uh, it loses that int. Losing the int on Legion's actually really painful. Um, she's one of those heroes that really needs all of her rent. Uh, she, she definitely does. She definitely does, but she also guarantees some type of leeway with the Crystal Maiden having a, all leveled up her aura. So it's not as bad as you would think. Yeah, when well, she does go blade mail. Um, oh, and up top, Shadow Shaman's dead again. They just dive the tower because CK is a tanky boy. Um, CK Dire uh, Voiceless Fade now has his armlet up, so he's pretty much ready to rock and roll. Um, once he gets, uh, it's a little level 15 when he kind of gets really crazy. Uh, we got TPs out bot. They do take bottom with the Clinks' damage, but they really want to fight this with the DD. There's the global. They can't really fight into that, and Legion just goes down. Now they're trying to kite out this global, but they're going to fight on the shrine into the invoker. Oh, this is going to be a disaster now. Meatball's going to land onto two, and they're stunned out, and just two are blown up, and the chase is on from the Sand King. He's got a stun in five seconds. Manages to get off. Oh, but Vision doesn't right-click him. And there's the miss. And she's able to blink strike away. I thought for sure they were going to get more off that. But uh, an invasion means Cold Snap didn't proc. And without Cold Snap proccing, they weren't able to keep the range of the stun. But now they're just going to push. They have a CK ult with the armlet. Oh, and they've got Vision of this Phantom Assassin farming. She's got to run. No blink on the Sand King, though. Not quite yet. But once they take this tower, he will have it. Legion... That's a further away from the blink. That's a huge get, Faf. Once they get the, the blink, they have a lot that they can actually use to defend a Serpent Ward push. You can have them blink in, use an ultimate, Oh, the Hex and... up there. Oh, there's the wards down. Oh, this CK might just be going down with the wards. Oh, he armlet toggles through it, but the PA goes in. She gets stunned up, gets nuked down, and just... 
Oh, they don't have enough to take down the CK. He's just aren't toggling through at all. Salter comes in to fight, but he is just getting meatball comboed up and just blown up. Shadow Shaman has no mana or much life left, but gets Sunstruck. Oh, the Sunstrike misses, but the press, uh, overwhelming odds doesn't miss. And they're just going to dive him under tower, and those wards weren't microed quite because he's dealing with this hero. And they're desperately looking for him. It, oh, but he found the hidey hole. It's being pinged out by Invoker. Oh no! <laughs> he had duel. He had duel, and he just he, killed him. Aww. He couldn't. He couldn't because he laid down a tree in front of him. Oh, he actually, did. Yeah, it was a really <laughs> smart play. He laid down a tree, but he kind of revealed him at the same time, knowing, "Hey, th I'm here." But you he can't had get a him. quell. He had a quell. He could have gotten dual damage here. It's true. That's true. I guess he was more scared of TP's potentially coming in. You know, you're still under a tier one. It's fine. Yeah, and. It's easy to say that as casters, you know, we're, we we see everything going on, but when you got your adrenaline pumping and you're yeah, under you just want a tier kill. one with wards, you're like, oh, I need to Oh, Shadow Shaman wants back in. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Hey, I, I know you didn't get that duel last time. I'll hook you up, man. I'll, I'll meet you back here, okay? <laughs> I guess that was what was exchanged. Because that was an optimistic TP. That was optimistic. I, I just think that was a miscommunication at that point. I yeah, think he's like, let's defend, team... let's defend. Yeah, somebody yeah. probably, it's the classic, somebody says, hey, can we defend tier, can we defend bot? And he's like, yeah, I can defend bot, and he TPs, and everyone else is like, no. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, but I'm already there, guys. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, man, they're going in up on top now. Uh, they CK may... got an illusion rune. Man, CK's going to use this illusion rune to push bot. That's... Oh, and up top they punished the lion. Uh oh. The meatball managed to do the damage. Ooh. Heal? Uh Tar's going in, but there's no mana on Direwolf. It was, it was a good up. exchange. It was a good exchange. But... They actually revealed a uh Atos at the at that moment on, on Silencer, so Really, it's actually worked out for Dire Straits at that Oh, point. what is si Okay, Silencer. Rip. Rest in peace. Another optimistic TP. Oh, no, and Lion gets oh, caught with the Sia Bolt! Oh. oh! That's why you always let it go. Even if there's no one around, you just let it go all the time. That is... That was beautiful. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe that actually happened. <laughs> and, man, PA's almost dying to these illusions. PA almost died to the CK Legion because it's brown boots, only two points of blur, Battle Fury though. Got the Battle Fury though. So. True. So she's going to be able to farm up a lot faster than what's, what CK is able to do. CK is pretty stacked though right now and they can put a lot of pressure. Really the worst Invoker thing to do actually. Invoker has eggs and they've got three blinks on the other heroes that aren't CK and Invoker. So this is... This is going to be an ugly game now. They they have to dodge fights or get if they, blown up. If they keep the pressure up, though, Faf, it's if they keep the pressure up. Because the, a lot of times you'll you'll see in these games, you'll you'll have people pick up a couple of blink daggers or a couple of big items like, oh, we're ahead. Let's let's maintain our lead and let's go back and farm when they have multiple blink daggers and they don't realize, oh, that's just for movement. That's to help me in my team fight or help me take advantage of a position that they don't have, and they it's time wasted. They they don't farm they farm just as fast, and they get up an, an item that's more important. Well, you, like you a talk PKB about the pressure. Something. We've got a four man movement here. CK is just manning up against this phantom assassin. He doesn't have his ult, but he does have the armlet. And there's the stun blink reveal. Oh. Tar passed to pop his ultimate just to get away, but they keep going in. CM goes on in. Tornado comes in to cancel. CK gets ulted. There's the duel. The duel's gonna come out. The wards are out though, so this could be disaster, but no, they're just too far ahead. The wards don't do enough damage to matter. Invoker's so tanky with the zags. That's a four for one. CK dies, but that's just because he was just kind of fa he just face initiated while the other four were looped around and their blank the blinks let them get off all the stuns after global was pretty much wasted because he tried to run with it. There was no aggressive follow-up afterwards. And they're just going to take this tier tower too, um, this tier two tower. And this game is looking to be a st absolute stomp. Uh, yeah. Greedy dueling's just punished. And also, Clinks did not go for Desto, so he's going for the Silent Staff build, and he's split pushing, which is is okay to do, but it's really guarantees a better result. Oh, he doesn't get the last hit. 
Oh, and he cancels his TP to get the last hit. I guess he saw the other team backing out, so might as well get that last. Oh, he didn't even get it. Oh, man, that feels bad. Yeah, and Dire, dire Wolf's looking pretty strong now. He's actually going to have his BKB up soon, which should answer a lot of the some, problems, actually. I think he gets the Manta first. Like, it's not even the BKB's the problem. The only problem was that when he, he just was kind of alone in that fight and took ha over half his HP before his team was in position, because he's like, hey, just come around, loop around him, I I'll just get him on me. And then he just kept charging at like one third, one half HP. As long as he can start these fights at full HP when his team's there to back him up, I don't even think he needs a BKB. Oh, my, my bad. I meant uh, I meant Invoker. I, I thought, I, thought oh. I said Dire Wolf. My bad. Oh, um, I thought you I meant the, uh, the... Yeah, he's going BKB on Invoker. That's the right call here. You don't... They don't really need the travels on him. Um, and once he has his BKB, there's just no way to kill him. Uh, Klinks is not doesn't have the items to man him up. Uh, Klinks does have the Orchid now, so until he has the BKB, he actually can die in these fights now. Right, but he's he's almost there. He's like only a couple, what a hundred away at this point. So one hundred and fifty, I think. Yeah. Right around. Show net worth. Yep. Net worth. So that. Yeah, and you can uh, see the Invoker is just in a whole other stratosphere from everyone else. Yeah, definitely. They have, like, the Silencer has the availability of using Rod, and, like, they have all these tools on kind of helping them oh, get these pickoffs. Is Trip looking to chase someone down? No, nope, they didn't have... Oh, they tried to chase the Clinks, but the Clinks just kind of juked them and ran through them with the Invis. Didn't find him. They're looking they have all... They they're kind of going for this four man, uh, four four one strat type type thing. Four man protect one. It's not even four man protect one. It's four men go and like do Are stuff on the dust? map. Wow, they're just chasing this clinks around, but no gem and they aren't dropping vision or anything. They're just like hoping he reveals skeleton walk, but they're giving space for PA to get some decent items. PA now has a, a freaking phase boot, so that's a plus. Pretty soon is going to have a component of uh, maybe an SNY or BKB, um, depending on what he decides he needs. Yeah, the uh, it's it's looking pretty pretty grim for the. Oh, uh, Clink's going one. on the CK. I don't think this is going to be enough. Nope, CK is just fine. Takes a lot of damage though. If somebody else had been there, they could have killed him. Yeah, what do you think? Trying to make space, and he's so far succeeding, honestly. He is making some space and moving them about, but Silencer is he really going gonna... to... Yeah, the Silencer just went for the gold talent. That's how pressured he feels. He feel like, I guess, the only way is to farm. Man, 200 health is so much. Oh, and they get a duel. Shadow Shaman just gets caught out. And Vision was there to get the clean up there anyway. The the the, the frog came out and kept him out, kept him back. The thing is, is that they're, they're getting Voiceless these picks. Voiceless popped his ult. Voiceless did pop his ult, but he's gonna get the tower for it. Like he's popped his yeah. ult for a reason. So yeah, it, but I don't even th I don't even think they needed to though. I think that's just kind of CK ult. It's long enough cooldown. I really think, you, especially when your team's here and you got Invoker with double forge, like you can just. No worries, you got that tower. Yeah, they, they also don't want to give up too much at this point, and... Sand King it, when they get... the Yules to deal with the Global Silence. There's the fort. They're gonna force him back, but... He's just gonna keep running around, they're just trying to... Oh, he does get dusted, though! Is he gonna get Frostbit? Yup. Orky comes out to counter that, but he's still dusted. Vision should be able to get the Blink stun here. He does kill the CM, but the Clinks is gonna die for this? Oh, no! The clinks with the DD. Oh, he does end up going down. Caustic yeah, the caustic... finished. Yeah. Yep. It's true. The the thing about the about the about the jeez. Man, he got you know he got seven hundred gold for that. Seven hundred and sixty gold for that. Dang. That's. I mean, they're behind, so you'll trade two for one, even if you're a well. He's like a dueling clink, so he's kind of that's a fine trade. For both supports. It's true. CK I think has that it is uh, 15 talent, so he's got that 10 extra strength now. So his HP pool is getting pretty de pretty huge. Yeah, he, he's he's getting pretty strong. He 
the lion really needs to get up a blink at this point. They need some type of in, uh, initiation. Shadow Shaman's going for a four staff, which is good. And that's kind of the problem that you have with the Shadow Shaman Lion. It's a lot of lockdown combination between the two, but it really doesn't offer you a lot of. It, it offers a lot of initiation, but not a lot of save because you kind of want to blink on both of those heroes, and you don't have a hero that's going for it. The, the four staff, the Availability of getting a Man, look at voices uh, just like running around like a boss solo trying to look for a fight. I think he's yeah, frustrated he's... with how his team isn't closing out the game. Like they're getting split push. I can, I can just feel like he's getting annoyed with it. Oh, they do get the duel onto the shadow shaman again. He was just looks like he's just trying to push out the waves with ether shock and just gets caught. But yeah, like, Voiceless has just literally been running around looking for this lion who's just running through his jungle, occasionally popping into their ward vision. Well, why not? You got you can get plenty of farm off of it, and they're getting it. Herps is also able to get some dual damage. They have this very squishy lineup versus a Sunstrike Invoker with, with the Legion Commander. You can just get your free damage all day. You don't really necessarily need to end at this uh, point. Legion has an Invis rune. It's going to find the silencer, I think. It's got to be fast he with this before Global comes out. Oh, he's going to do it. Oh, and there's the Sun Strike and the stun follow up. Klinks comes in with the Orchid, but Brightspot's going to deal with him. They get the wards down, and they do get the kill on the CM, but are they going to get anything else? No, Herp's going to be able to run away, and the wards are committed. So, a two for one. Uh, they did get a dual win out of it, but that's a lot of gold overall. Just killing the two supports, because they're so far ahead, they're getting a lot of gold. So, I I, feel, I, just, I don't see why they aren't getting more objectives. Like, they should have just taken Roche at this point. I feel like they're letting... The fact that they don't have the greatest of wave clear, other than, say, the Invoker, I think it's meaning that they're giving up a little too much here. Their lead hasn't gone up on Dire Straits, and they're in such a dominant position, you don't want to stay even, because the relative lineups... Like, you can stay at the same level of head, but PA's got the BKB now. Once she has that BKB, like, the whole game changes. Yes, yeah, she she. It's important for her to have it, but they still have the availability of having Chaos Knight illusions. Yes, yeah, she has the AOE, but she. It's about getting all the hits on her at once. Yes, you get a couple misses, but they're still doing full damage. They still have a lot of potential there, and he's still farming pretty decently. Yeah, I mean they, they also have dual blade mail. They have dual blade mail. She if she's BKB, she still kills herself with dual blade mail. Uh, that's exactly not, not a huge issue. And sun strike. The issue is like once the BKB is. The combination of it and global give them a, an ability to actually win a fight because if, if pa can wait till the key stuns or duel to go out then bkb and go in like it's the classic uh phantom assassin thing you get the crits on a couple big, big cleaves you can win the fight like that's just how it is once pa hits the level 18 bkb timing but they are smoked up as four now i think they're saying hey we, we, we can't keep trading random kills here let's just smoke up behind our invoker and just go kill somebody and here's the blink blade mail duel the pa is a bkb it doesn't matter there's a global silence and a nice two-man stun but pa is just barely going to be able to live here gets tornadoed up should be able to get up no blinks back into the tornado and just dies ck's there and the lion who had the nice stun still dies in the end so global silence committed and two are dead instantly and invoker has to tp back because this clinks is just committing the slip push and he has the deso now so you cannot try to trade racks with him because he'll rax you, um, and you don't want to trade uh, rax for rax in this situation. But they are going. They are going to get a free roche, though. Yeah. They have no real answer for this. The ultimate has been committed on the silencer. Lion just they have no. Back. What? The clinks isn't even there. Neither is the invoker. Invoker's getting gone on. There's the silence staff. He comes out, uh, but he doesn't have anywhere near the damage, even with the deso. Because Invoker just runs away with his boots travel, and he's got this plate mail now. So if he doesn't have the plate mail, maybe he can chase that. Oh, but they come out. Here's the sun strike, and the supports come out. And Morgan Free Farm makes sure he gets the kill with the full on dancing alt. They're going to interrupt Roche here. They were trying to do it on the side, getting oh, the, get the, the taunt deal. out. And they're going to be able to clean up not only the wards, they're able to clean up Roshan as well if they do get in there. Yeah, They're a little worried about the situation. PA is not there. PA is just going to farm. Oh, there's the epicenter channeled out. The Shadow Shaman is just going to go down to that. Silencer gets caught out. Gets reality. Oh, he 
four staffs himself up, but Volker's got the combo on him. If he lands, it's dead. The blinks come through, and that's a four for none. And meanwhile, Phantom Assassin really did well to farm. He hasn't. Phantom Assassin actually doesn't have the BKB. Has the money for it, but hasn't bought out for it. I guess valuing the buyback. I don't know. He was valuing gotta, the buyback. I think you just got to buy the BKB. But you do. Is, you have to trust in yourself to actually get it off in, in the actual team fight. It's not about coming back with a second life, it's about being able to make it the most out of your first. Yeah, but here's the CKL. They're gonna have four heroes to defend this, but they won't have the silencer. But if they wait for the Shadow Shaman, the tier 3 is dead. And honestly, probably the Rax, because they need to go immediately. There's a Lion Stun to most of them, but it's not enough. And that's just a lane yeah, Rax gone. They, they don't have a lot of ults to commit, and they know that, but they don't have the positioning to be able to do anything about this. They could just go back. Actually, taking that shrine could spell bad bad news for them if they smoke up on the Radiant and try to go yeah. out and stop this. It, this is a little bit risky, but I, I think I don't think they're going to be punished for it. Oh, no. they're doing what they're, I just said. Yeah, they're going to do... That's the whole thing. Everyone says, okay, we got the tier 3, and teams always want to go straight to the shrine. It's almost always a mistake. It's better off to actually retreat and then you take the shrine once you have a split push you like you know they're on the other side of the map like that's when you go sneak the shrine that sort of thing but doesn't look like they're gonna be able to catch anyone uh because legion has the blink could easily blink away as soon as it's off cooldown really isn't afraid of anything oh they get the atos comes the lion stun but the blade mail up they don't want to commit for the damage on it meanwhile on the other side of the fight shadow shaman puts down the wards but they clean up the CK, but the PA goes down in the meanwhile. And they just trade the Aegis for the PA. Lion ends up going down behind the Tier 1 tower. Roker's getting good to go upon the Silencer. Uh, I think he might be dead. Yeah, he's dead. Right? Yeah. yeah. There's the four staff out from Direwolf. Just a dead hero. So it ends up being a 3 for 1 plus the Aegis. And, you know, the Aegis exists to win you those fights, and that's just what it did. And meanwhile, Invoker now has the TP boots, so he can just keep responding to the Clinks. I'd like to see the Sand King also get some TP boots, and then just make sure that Clinks is never a problem. Uh, as far as split push goes. Clinks is about to have his VKB as well. Once that happens, they do, they will spell trouble for Dire Straits. They have a lot of different tools on moving around. They do have VKBs themselves to kind of help themselves out. Uh, it's their damage is a little lacking at this point though the they're going for a Shiva's on invoker So not getting a lot of damage I actually would have liked to have seen a sheep at this point get an another stun more damage out for them have a lot more Movement around the map if you especially when he has a BKB. It's kind of a guaranteed Okay, I, I am going to exist this this match because they have to have some way to jump me to be able to, to lock me down, and PA is nowhere near her basher. They know that Clinks is not going to be able to stun him out because the or Orchid does not work versus BKB, See. and their supports aren't going to be farmed enough to have blinks. See, I actually disagree with you. I think once he has the BKB, like the only thing that the way you die is if you don't have armor. Like it's the only way he dies is if like the PA crits you hard enough and Hex is nice and all but they've got three heroes with Blink who can initiate and a CK for stun like they don't have a problem starting fights and Boker just needs to be exist and just get off all the spells count on your team to control heroes it's true but you can dodge you can easily dodge stun all of those stuns with BKB once they get it up and they know that they're building BKBs the only ones that that you can't get out of is Legion Commander so when you have more than one Core that's building towards a BKB, then your combo doesn't work anymore. So the, it's good to have that hex to be able to jump in or to kind of counter them before they're able to even get it up, so that you can do the stun combination. Because once once BKB's up, Crystal Maiden is useless. Yeah, and they caught the CK split, the clean split pushing. He was getting up to the tier three tower again, and CK and CM just deal with him. Uh, so now they're down the clinks and they're just going to push out this wave bot middle will naturally push and the top is also pushed in pretty far so they're just going to wait for the wave to come and I think then they just push for high ground again they have all their ults they actually have a gem on the CK uh, and it looks like he's got an item on the courier as well just some TPs so yeah a lot of uh, a lot of potential spirit. That's so much of your mana. That's 200 mana. That's a lot. 
It is, but he up. is right right next to base, so and they're gonna take a little bit to, to actually push in, so it's okay. They're gonna use their illusions just to illusion push. It's, it's a nope. good safe way to, to do this. Nope, oh. he goes straight in with the gem. Look at that. Uh, nice purge on the uh, hex and the stun. They come on in, the Shadow Shaman gets caught. They burst down the lion, Clinks is still dead. They get the wards down, but CK pops his BKB and Voka pops his BKB and they can't, can't contest that. The BK, they didn't get much out of those BKBs though, they just kind of disengaged uh, after global. Ooh, Silencer takes the Sun Strike. Still, they're just taking their axe, there's not much they can do about this. BKB on the PA's pop to kill some illusions and not even any heroes. And the illusions are still actually kicking his ass because he just has... BKB, uh, Morbid Masks, no stats at all, still. So. Yep, 22k game. And just at this uh, point, I would like to see a heart coming out from Chaos Knight. I think once he gets heart, there's nothing that they can do. There's yeah. PA is not farmed enough and does not have the right build to be able to hit down all of his illusions. I mean, I think so. any item he gets, any, like, uh, CK item he gets will fulfill that. If he gets Scotty, it's the same thing. Like, if if as long as he gets another big stat item with his 4k gold, like, he's just gonna be unkillable. He's already got 3.5k HP once his armor's toggled on. He's hit level 20, so he's got the 12 extra stats. Clinks is trying to cut the wave, but... I mean, they got creeps alive here. Uh, they don't... Unless they can blow up this entire creep wave, uh... It's not gonna do anything. So Clinks is hunting a courier, maybe, and they're just gonna lose this Rax now. Um, yep. BKB on the Legion just runs in, zoning them out, and they're just gonna hit buildings while this happens. They pop the yeah, board, but they can just back off and reset. Yeah, they can just back up, wait for that to come back down, reset, and the other lanes are pushing. They have mega, they have supers in the other lane, so it's it's not like that's going to be a problem. And they're not going to have a Clinks if he tries to go out and push. Honestly, Clinks has his BKB at this point. If he bought that out, I think they have a chance on Lemons to to come back at this point. They they need they just need to buy out their possibilities. Like maybe get Lion Blink to surprise them at this point. Because if you if you go into this match and you see that they actually haven't bought any items from their last fight, so they're, they're they gotta go now or Rax is dead. They just move on in. BKB on the PA, but she goes right into all the CK illusions and just dies instantly. That's the one target she can't go in on, and this game is just over. They buy back, but they're gonna get mega creeps now, and they're just running around inside the base. Well, it's not over until it's over, but they did. They they are they do have mega creeps and there is not a lot of pushback. They do have the availability of having a battle fury coming out on uh, out on Phantom Assassin and getting a life steal aura to help out the rest of her team. Though the the team fights would have to go damn near perfect for that to be able to happen. And CK actually decides to go for a AC to help out the rest of his team. And the GG is called. Yep, they call it. Um, there's no realistic way for them to come back in this game. It is a best of five. This is kind of one of those... You take what time... Like, maybe you talk about what we thought about the game went wrong. Uh, or do whatever you want to do, but just... There's no point in struggling against Megas for another five minutes if you got at least two more games coming up. So It's true. Uh, real quick, things to talk about before we jump into the next one. Don't do Shadow Shaman in the offlane. It, it does not work. That is... A flub thing that I will guarantee you it will never work if you're going in team play. Shadow Shaman does not work as a support in the offline. Uh, I will say this. You've had me do it before. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, did I have another guy with you? Yeah. Okay, then then that's a try lane. You don't can't do a single Shadow Shaman versus a try lane. There you it go. has a duo. No, I, the, I, but the way you said it is like Shadow Shaman just doesn't work in the off lane, and I was like, well, it's not. Yeah, you gotta, you just gotta phrase it. You gotta be specific with these sort of things. Like Shadow Shaman's a great tri lane hero if you've got the other heroes can provide uh, the beef and the follow up, but he doesn't do anything in a, a dual lane usually, unless like the dual lane is versus another dual lane, like Jug Shadow Shaman or something like that, but. That's not what the case was. It was a tri lane. So now we just gotta it's wait true. for the lobby. 
And that was game one. That was game so, one. After seeing those teams, how do you feel about the teams? Uh, Dire Straits definitely had more of a gameplay written out for what they wanted to do. They really valued the silencer pick in the draft and wanted to guarantee that certain things got out of it. I think that they felt like the heroes overpowered this patch and didn't really have a lot of counters. And Dire Straits didn't really let that freak them out. They just played a normal game, got cores that could exist through a silencer ult, didn't really depend on it, even though they had the Invoker picked up. Like, Invoker has that problem, but the other two cores didn't. And Invoker can get pretty tanky, too, if you let him. So, really, uh, a, just a well, well-drafted well stage game. I don't think that Lemons misplayed too much. I think that they had plenty of decent game decent game sense. The only thing that was questionable was dropping the wards at well, the Shadow Charm had a lot of different questionable plays. We're dropping the wards at the pool For the and, hard camp. and TPing in at that one point, which could have been team play communication error, not necessarily on him, but really the dropping the ult to farm some creeps is never a thing to happen, whether you're playing Shadow Shaman as a support or playing him as an ed core. So, not really sure what was going on there. Okay, next lobby is up, Flub. Yeah, I mean, I'll say this. I didn't, uh, if you watch Dire Wolf and Tar, they were relatively evenly matched in the mid lane. Uh, what happened was they were just outdrafted. Lemon Snow Cones had a worse draft. And even amongst the draft in itself, independent, they played it worse because they didn't use wards to take objectives when it came up, and they didn't use global silence to win team fights when it was up um, efficiently. Even when they used global and they got two kills, they kept chasing, and then they get counter kills right back. So they never got advantage out of those kind of two key heroes ultimates, and or even Lion Finger. I don't think they got great value out of that either. So they didn't get good value out of their draft, even within the fact of I didn't like the draft. Um, so, but overall, skill-wise, I think they're about even. Like you said, the only thing that stand out is, unfortunately, the Shadow Shaman had a lot of misplays as far as decision-making that I saw. But, you know, that's also the one of the ones that I think those are the ones we happen to see. So, you know. It's true. There could have easily With been a questionable finger that we just didn't see. Um, or, you know, questionable epi. Uh, it just kind of depends on where the camera is and where the kills happen. Because, like, you can have a bad epi and it just, like, goes off in the middle of nowhere. And you just, like, hope no one sees it. Sometimes no one sees it. It's a little bad at sinking. I feel like it's a little harder to have a bad wards placement than it is to have a bad epi, though. Bad, bad ward placement can can happen you can drop it out whenever you're like dying at the yeah, end they, you're like, they okay get, I and they get kited out they just run away from it right whereas bad epi can be easily you could use the silencer ult, which was the thing that i was incredibly surprised about if they would have had a little bit more ward potential and kind of fought around their wards they had a great way to stop dire straits by using the silencer ult, having someone dive and see, hopefully seeing the Sand King off to the side, yeah. alting with the Silencer and just canceling their whole team fight combination with Crystal Maiden and CK being, I'm, I'm not CK, but uh, Sand King being in the back lines and CM has to get close at that point. So if you alt, she's food, whoever's you're going on is food. So it's two people out of the fight. They have to back. You may be able to catch a third. So... Uh, I, yeah, but that, I, I, that all relies on them. It's really hard to pull that off, though. Right, well, and that's it, it, it's part not of the hard problem to, with the draft. I don't, I don't think it's hard to pull off, but they have to be in a position where they're putting the wards on a tower, and they have vision, and they never, they were they, ever, they were never really grouped up for that. They were kind of had these dual lanes. They were trying to get stuff out of the both lanes. They were just split, and then they goes there. And Mister Blue is complaining that we didn't talk about Brown Boots Battle Fury. I'll have you know that you weren't watching when we were complaining about it as he was doing it mid game and saying it was bad, and watching him die to CK Illusion Rune Illusions. Um, yeah, maybe. But, I mean, maybe we didn't focus on it. But I don't know. Like <laughs> we we mentioned it in the game. Like you don't want to just slam somebody. Oh, it's a bad build. Like it's a be a bad build. He's weak because of it. You just move on. Like. You can't yep. just be negative here, so I'm really interested to see how they're di uh, the different. Um, Lemon Snow Cones, what is their record in the regular season of 82L? I wonder if they played. 
or not. I'm curious now. I'm just going to go here. We got a little time to kill because there's a bathroom break. Um, let's see. Lemon snow cones. Team. It's also whenever you play the heroes that that you that you do you you look at other different things and you're and you're gonna say, okay yeah we play PA we realize that it's a bad build you can kind of move on from from that point and like talk about why it's a bad build we kind of did already within the cast but we we're talking about the support plays because that's the way that you can kind of move around in a team fight PA's build didn't didn't offer that much to the team fight but it wouldn't have affected as it still wouldn't have been as big of a deal if she did go for a different item build because they still had team fight problems that Sand King was able to get off a epicenter yeah. blink almost every single fight. So and they started most engagements with a blink duel, so a hero was dead. And sometimes they traded two for one and they still gained gold out of it, but you're still like it just puts you on the back foot. They had lost map control and the invoker was just farming the entire time. Like, that was the main thing. It's like, CK doesn't even need to be ahead in items because of his talents. Like, how much health he gets out of that combined with Armlet. Like, once he hits level 20, even if he's just, like, hanging in the ballpark of your other carry, like, he just gets so hard to deal with. Unless you actually have one of the heroes that counters him out. They didn't have that, so. It's true. Um, well, hopefully... We could get going on this game too already. So, I think people are just doing bathroom breaks and stuff. So yeah, so, yeah, but. they are. So, but yeah, so yeah, Kimbrel just joined the stream. Thanks for showing up, Kimbrel. Yeah, it's uh, Tars Crew versus Lemon Snow Cones, uh, or Lemon Snow Cones is Tars Crew versus the Dot P Dire Straits. So it's a pretty good matchup, um, pretty even. I just looked at Lemon Snow Cones. They lost one game in one of the playoffs and one game in one of their other series, so they've had a ton of success in the under 3k league, but I don't know how even this is, and they did not play Dire Straits in the round robin stage sort of thing, so these teams haven't played each other yet so, hopefully um no man, Mr. Blue, like, that's not the worst mistake, because yeah, you but like is it relevant to the fights that are happening? Like, oh, this is a bad item build. Like, this is still a bad item build, Mr. Blue. Like, as, as Flub said, like, once the bad build's done, you're, you're kind of committed into it. Um, but, yeah. So, from there. Uh, yep. Uh, looks like we're deciding uh, choice inside um, now. So, hopefully we can get going in a few minutes. And Kimball's claiming that they've won a few of these tournaments before. So... They're a solid team. So I expect them to bounce back. I'm hoping if they do dual lanes, they just got to pick stronger ones. Like, you have to pick stronger ones. Like, do something tanky. Do something strong. Like, pick up the Legion yourself plus a support. Like, dude, can't do this Clink Shadow Shaman. No, this is not not something, not a thing. Um, yeah, like, really, their draft their draft looked good until the PA pick, Faf, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, Clink's carry would have been fine. If they just pick, like, a... Uh, an Earthshaker, if it wasn't banned out, I can't quite remember. They could have picked, like, a Darkseer to just pressure the CK. Like, you just, you know, just Iron Shell spam them out. Uh, Iron Shell's great with, um, well, none of their heroes, actually. But, you know what I mean? Like, Darkseer doesn't have to have an Iron Shell target to be a viable pick, in my opinion. This isn't pro Dota. We have to maximize everything. It's true. You can have, you can have plenty of other different offlaners that would have offered a better potential as e either as a duo or as a you know, who I, you know who I actually really would have liked? Underlord. Reign of Fire plus Pit of Malice makes it very hard. If he just holds the Malice till CK does something, it's really hard for him to actually do much with his illusions just because of the nature of Malice and then Firestorm makes it very easy to find the real CK. And it's just provide. And he also is an aura carrier. They didn't have somebody to build those aura